I'm curious how you feel about the new mandate and this new vernacular that most of us are unfamiliar with known as social distancing. Certainly, we live in a different time than we ever have in history. I just came home a couple of days ago from Detroit, where I'd been preaching, and of course, I was around different people, uh, riding on an airplane and being in larger crowds than most people are accustomed to during this day and age. When I got home, uh, I didn't even want to hug my daughter. I tried to stay away from her, not because I had any symptoms of the coronavirus, but just in case, because of her frail condition and knowing that something like this could be devastating, uh, I wanted to keep my distance. And earlier today, my wife called me and was asking me what the appropriate way was to correspond with her mother. Her mother also has emphysema. She's elderly. And my wife has been picking up her medications and groceries, but still wanted to be very careful because she didn't want to be responsible for um, her, her mother getting sick. So social distancing, it's, uh, it's unusual for many of us. Now, for me personally, I've never minded being uh, alone. I actually enjoy my seasons of being alone probably because uh, of my travel and being around large groups of people. Uh, I don't mind being by myself, and I don't mind uh, getting away. But for other people, that's a big challenge. When I think about social distancing, really in many cases, it's, it's a form of isolation. And I think about two different components of isolation. One, isolation can be a great thing. It can be a great time to reconnect with God. As I look throughout the scriptures, I see that this was a common uh, thing that happened with some of the greatest men and women of God in a time when they heard God's voice louder than they'd ever heard it. If you remember John the Baptist, long before he came on the scene and announced the coming of the Messiah, he was out in the wilderness alone. But it's then that God prepared him. It's a time that God spoke to him and prepared him for the great mission that he had. This also held true with Paul and with many other um, great people in the scripture where God got them alone. Even David, one of my favorite people in the Bible, long before he came on the scene uh, and fought Goliath, he had been alone. He had been isolated in the uh, sheep fields taking care of sheep. But God began to develop him and prepare him and refine him for the great work that was ahead. So the first thing I want to say is, is for those of you that really don't like being uh, away from groups of people, you don't really like being alone, uh, it's a time to take advantage of it because it can be a time when you hear God's voice more clearly than you've ever heard it in your life. You might even have some additional time that you normally don't have. Um, and the, really the best example of social distancing or, or, or isolation would really be Jesus Christ himself. Those of you familiar with the Bible remember that he went into the wilderness uh, and it was a place where he was tempted of the devil 40 days. So yes, there is there can be a negative aspect of, of isolation. It can be a time when the enemy attacks you. So we see the benefits of it, and then we see also the dangers that can also come with it. But even though Jesus Christ had been tempted by the devil for 40 days in the wilderness, it also was a time of preparation for him, a time to forge the metal in him to prepare him for the cross that was going to be ahead. So uh, it's, it's a different day, and for some of us, um, we welcome some of these changes as far as uh, maybe a little more time away with family or maybe time away from groups. And then for others of us, it's a challenge, uh, maybe feelings of loneliness or feelings of depression. But I want to encourage you that in the midst of this new terminology and this time of social distancing, that while you may be distanced from other people, it's a time that you can get closer to Christ. It's a time where you can dive into deep waters and maybe even additional time that you normally don't have to spend with him to allow him to maybe minimize some of the fears, to bring peace in your life, and to give you greater clarity of what his mission and purpose is in your life. We all know that his chief goal for us uh, outside of a relationship is to bring us peace. And if there's anything that this coronavirus has taught us, it's the reminder that life is brief, and really we have no control over anything, literally nothing. And so knowing that we don't have control and knowing that ultimately God is control, it's a time to dive into him, to seek his peace, to seek, seek his comfort, and to realize that with this opportunity, uh, with, with really this, this tragic thing that's going on, it also is an opportunity, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to know God in ways that we never have. I know today he seeks to bring you peace. 
it's available. He says that in John 16, 33. In this world, you'll have tribulation. But I come to bring you peace that the world cannot give. No fear, peace. We'll see you soon.